Hello everyone, it's me and over there. Bam. <laughs> Just gonna keep going. I would like to do some sounds with you today. Um you like them. Uh, the first thing I would like to show you, I have the mic right here so I can go in and out and talk to you like this with my big hunchback. I get really hunched over when I do that. <laughs> um, the first thing I want to show you is my shirt. I, uh, I'm pretty sure that I showed people on Facebook, but I don't know that I got to show you guys on YouTube. This for my birthday. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to show you too much. Okay. Can you see? There's a rabbit and a finish line. And then there's this blue dude and he's chilling. He has a drink. He's not phased at all. He hasn't even crossed the start line yet. Uh, if you don't know, I am a arguably the queen of Mario Kart, and uh, this guy's from Mario Kart, the blue shell guy. I know him well, because I'm usually in first when I play. <laughs> it sounds so arrogant. Um, I am a, a self-proclaimed queen of Mario Kart. So my friend got me this for my birthday. Because that's the only way they could ever beat me is with the blue shell guy. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I want to show you guys. I always try to start with the loudest thing. used this in another video and I had to I remember this I did the whole video edited it rendered it uploaded it and I realized that um, there was a, a number showing that I don't think could have uh, done anything to my privacy but I ended up taking the whole thing down, re-editing it, rendering it, and uploading it without this object. So I have made sure to cover the number so I can show you it today. It's real. I found it in my basement and I believe it's my grandmother's or was my grandmother's back in the day when people still use these. Um, it occurs to me that some of you may have never seen one of these. So, I'll explain to you how it works. This is where you hang up the phone. Like that. And you pick it up. You would hear a dial tone, regular one. So put it to your ear. You don't hear anything because it's not on. And then to dial, it's empty. <laughs> to dial, you would locate the number that you were that you wanted to call. So I'll show you, but 
So let's say you wanted the number five. You would put your finger into the circle, drag the wheel to this metal part. You can't go farther than that. And then you would let it go. And it would slide back to that number. I'm not going to let it go because it would make a very loud sound. So let's call a number together, okay? Let's start over. Okay, I know where we're gonna go. One. Hello? Yes, this is Heather. I'd like to kick them nasty thoughts. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. And then you would hang up. Like that. And it had a rubber cord. so heavy so I could manipulate it better for you. But it is really heavy. If you liked it, let me know and I will bring it back for you. Okay? It was better. Muzzles. Excuse me for a moment while I put this elsewhere so I have more room. Rubik's Cube or Finger Claws? Let's do Finger Claws because they're cooler. Okay. I bought two pairs of these in the Halloween store. I went shopping recently. Finger 
finger claws were one of them. I don't know if you can see. They have uh, little bells right here. And one, two, three, four skulls. So it's very really and you wear it on your hand it's very loose on me I would have to um, uh, improvise and so it goes over your wrist and then these go on your finger Like that. So I have two. I have two of these. Um, Ardranila. If you guys don't know who she is, she's a, a fantastic content creator. She made uh, one of the most beautiful ASMR videos ever, in my opinion. Uh, both, actually, two of the most beautiful ASMR videos ever. She used claws similar to these, I think, in her Solve et Coagula video. I will link her channel and the videos in the description box. But this is what they look like. You will be seeing these again in a future roleplay by someone a little bit sinister one. I really like them. I think they are a little fancy and evil looking. They tickle too. So, I don't know if you can see them actually. I'm not touching my face with my, my fingers. Doesn't hurt, don't worry, I'm not hurting myself. Like Catwoman. I'm going to purr. Purr. I'm just gonna trill my, my tongue. You know how people trill their R's? So I'm gonna do that. I don't know if it'll work for you. I'm not gonna back away from the mic. This is can you hear jingling? The jingly bells. What does it sound like if I claw your ear? Are you a cat eating? What does it sound like? Does it sound like anything? Just silent. The claw along the bell. Feels really good on my scalp, though. I can hear snoring. I might have to go wake up the lady bear and tell her to stop snoring.
sounds a little bit different. Actually, I'm going to go wake up the lady bear, I think. Maybe not. So, I bought a Rubik's Cube. Those are the finger claws. You like? Just one of my new jingly bells. I'll be seeing those again one day. Just not in the sound video. Or in the sound video if you liked it. <laughs> so next. Okay. Nothing on here. As far as location. I bought this Rubik's Cube. It's still wrapped up. I thought we could unwrap it together. It has a red side. And a green side. A gold side. A blue side. I suppose. This will be the orange side. And a silver side. And then they all have holograms on them. I'll show you. Holograms? Holograph. Hol holographic. Hollow Hol something. Uh, there's heart. Using the pads of my fingers. Touching the very thin. 
It has the biggest pad. Are you ready? open it if I went really fast, but doing it deliberately like this is hard. This light is all messed up. That's because there's something under it. They put the stickers over something. Now, why would they do that now? It's going to drive me crazy. All the hearts. I like the blue side. Blue is my favorite color. I think it's so pretty. It is pretty, right? I like it. Uh, what's the other side? Green is also okay. Switching sides for you. Can't really see how beautiful the green is. What about the gold?
après eux. Still untouched. So let's change that. Let's do the middle. Okay. I like this side the best. So you have. Silver, orange, blue, silver, green, red, silver, red. Silver, gold, orange, blue, red. Let's see if I can make it go back to normal now. <laughs> Probably not. There's a really great song that is by a band called Athlete, called Rubik's Cube, and I discovered it from watching uh, an Adventure Time video <laughs> that someone made about Simon and about Simon Petrikov. Um, it's really beautiful, and when I first heard it, it was back late January or February and well, at that time uh, my best friend was going through something and it made me think of that person like immediately when I heard it and so I sent it to that person It struck a chord with them, and they've uh, held on to it ever since, and use it occasionally. 
so it's kind of special to me. Uh, if you've never heard that song, I encourage you to check it out because it's beautiful um, and it might speak to you. Okay. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time and only have gotten through three things. Okay. Uh, speaking of it, love will go to the, we'll do this one, even though it's not the loudest. Oh, adventure time. Yeah, I'm sure most of you know by now that I am a massive uh, fan of Adventure Time. Um, like, tremendously. I think it's one of the, uh, more clever shows on television and it makes me happy in a very uh, light-hearted way and it also can make you emotional because it's a layered show it has a lot of metaphors um i mentioned one of the episodes in another video called dungeon train i said it was a metaphor for uh having depression a couple of you said, no, it's not, Heather. It's about gaming. On the surface, it's about gaming. But the metaphor, in my humble opinion, is about depression. Because they open the episode with Finn being very upset about his breakup. And Jake says something along the lines of, there are, you know, more people out there how are you doing? And Finn says, I don't know, man. My brain, what does he say? He says, I don't know, man. My brain doesn't have any direction. And Jake says, well, do you want to, you know, jump back in? And Finn was like, no. Nah. So they find this train that goes in a circle. And they jump on it, and every car of the train has a bunch of enemies to beat and when you beat them you get loot that's the gaming part of it um, so they defeat all the cars on the train and uh, Jake's like okay we did it um, this is Jake he's a dog everything I'm going to show you these are all made by one of my friends for me one of my very best friends in the whole world uh, for Christmas last year. Uh, they were handmade and sewn. I think uh, one of a kind gifts are more special. Or gifts that uh, come at unexpected times. Little things that make them, anyway, it's special. This is Jake. This is Finn. Ta da! And it's a. It's his backpack. So, Jake says to Finn, Hey man, we did it. We beat this train. We got all this cool loot. Let's go home. And Finn says, No. I want to keep doing this. This is fun for me. And so they keep going through the circle. Going in circles, okay. Metaphors. Uh, and he keeps amassing all this loot and they beat this person. I'm trying to make their little felt hands pull my hair off my face. They beat a person who has a future crystal. And when they look into the future crystal, uh, Finn sees himself as this really powerful. He's really excited about it. But that means that they stayed on the train forever, basically. And Jake's like, no, let's go home. We can't keep doing the same things over and over. You're not really getting anywhere. This isn't a challenge for you. It's not, he doesn't really say that, but there's the message. And Finn doesn't want to. He wants to stay where he's comfortable, or he knows that he can 
do something, but something that doesn't require any emotional investment from him or any, any real investment from him at all. And, uh, there's a scene where Jake says, well, I'm going to leave without you. And Finn lets him, but he doesn't really leave because they're brothers and they're best friends. Um, but he goes to the top of the train and he's looking at the stars and he says, I wonder what my kids are doing right now. And he sleeps there, and the next morning he goes and he finds Finn. And Finn's all jacked up with magic items and stuff. And they fight about leaving. And Jake doesn't leave, and something happens, and they look through the- Finn sees the future crystal again. He looks in it, and he sees himself as this wicked power thing. And in the background, he sees Jake, and Jake's very old and withered. And he realizes that Jake never left him. If he, if he stays on this path, Jake will stay too, and waste their, waste his life, because he cares about him so much. And so he decides, nope, I gotta go home. I gotta, even though home is hard, and I don't feel good at home. I gotta go home because there are people that care about me and I need to do better for myself. Or else they'll go down with me too. And so, that's how it- I just told you the whole episode, but it's not just about gaming. It's about, I think, something different. He's going through a breakup, or he went through a breakup, and he has, is experienced feelings of not wanting to try anymore. Get it? That's what I think anyway. I know that these don't make any sounds really, but I also have, I showed you her in a, one of my first videos. This is Lumpy Space Princess. Ah, she's my favorite. She and Simon. Ice King. Also Hansel. I don't know. Scratching will sound good to you. Does it? Itchy, itchy, itchy. Ah. LSP. She's really funny. She's 15 in the show. And she's, <laughs> she's really funny. <laughs> um, if you've never watched an episode, an episode of Adventure Time, I encourage you to watch ones that feature LSP, particularly, it's called Gotcha. Just watch that one, okay? And she floats when she starts talking. Um, she's 15 and she's a boy. Uh, she thinks that she's really hot and everybody wants her. <laughs> and she's, she's just really matter of fact and she doesn't have filters. And I think she's tremendously awesome. Gunther, or Gunther, depending on the episode. All the penguins in Adventure Time are named Gunther or Gunther, regardless uh, if they're male or female. And there's one episode where uh, the king of the Nidosphere escapes from the Nidosphere, which is hell. Walking on ooh, which is earth, and he's sucking the souls out of everything. And he go, <laughs> and he, uh, he, you find him in one of the scenes talking to someone, and you can't see who it is. And he's saying, "You are by far the most evil of beings I have ever encountered. Give me your soul." And then it pans down, and it's <laughs> it's 
Gunther. And Gunther's like, meh, meh. and he slaps him. And he's like, wow. And so there's always these little references to Gunther being kind of evil, especially when the female Gunther. Uh, I'm actually no, I'm not gonna ruin the whole show for you. And then I have Marceline. Is it just you and me in the wreckage of the world? That must be so confusing for. I know you're going to need me here with you But I'm losing myself and I'm afraid you're gonna lose me too This is Marceline the Vampire Queen And this is her axe base uh, I made one of these A really large one out of cardboard for a thing I went to Where I dressed as Marceline uh, She... I have a friend who calls her em em emo 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 Marceline. I can't. I did a terrible job with that. It's emo Marceline, so em. You figure it out. And Fred says bubblegum. I like the word bubblegum. Bubblegum. She's droopy. <laughs> she's she's all melty. Uh, recently, there's been some references and hints that Princess Bubblegum is basically like God in that show. She's really old, and she gives things life. Uh, I really like the the hints they've been giving in the show recently, as far as the storyline. Ooh. And I have ice king covered in hair, covered in hair. This is Simon Petrikov. He is arguably the most layered character in the show by far. Uh, I've talked I've talked to you about him before. Yeah. His name is Simon Petrikov and he found the crown when he was a human and whenever he would put on the crown it would make him do things and say things and go crazy and turn into this person the ice king and he had a wife named Betty and one day when he put on the crown he did something and he doesn't remember what and Betty left him saw her again, and he used to call Betty his princess. And after that, there was this really big war called the Mushroom War. And basically the world ends in a nuclear catastrophe. And Simon, with the help of the crown, um, saves his life basically saves the world is what they've hinted at in other episodes. It keeps the world from being blown apart. Um, oh look, how did you guys tell me that I had something in the corner of my mouth? That's okay. It happens. Spit happens. <laughs> um, so, what? What was I saying? Oh, he saves the world. He saves himself. Basically, um, most life is all corrupted, radioactive mutants, and the world is changing, and he befriends this little girl that he finds, who is Marceline, but she's little. She's half demon, half vampire, but when he finds her, she's just demon. She's seven. And... Protect her, walking the earth, you know, traveling because they're both their own kind of immortal. To protect her, 
not immortal, but age is a different thing for them. Uh, he would put on the crown. And every time he puts on the crown, he goes a little bit more mad. And eventually, he puts on the crown and never turns back into Simon. And it's kind of his big sacrifices. And the reason that Ooh still exists and that Marceline is alive and there's all this life now is because of Simon and his crown. And his sacrifice was who he was and his memories. So now he's this really powerful ice wizard who doesn't remember who he was, but he still has bits and pieces locked up in his head. One of which is that he wants a princess. So he's always kidnapping the princesses in the show. And so he's a villain, kind of. It's very sad because and the reason that he wants a princess is because he wants Betty back. He just doesn't remember that Betty was even a person. Get it? It's really sad. Uh, he's my favorite. And then I have... I showed you this in my Nerdy Feather video. The portal turret. I'm different. Prometheus was punished for giving the gift of knowledge to man. He was cast into the bowels of the earth and backed by birds. Don't forget, don't make lemonade, it won't be enough. Get mad, get mad, don't forget. Her name's different portal turret is special to me. Uh, I, I assign value to things. Emotional value <laughs> to fictional things very frequently. One of which is the portal turret. That is different. Because it doesn't want to kill anything. Why does my house make noises? Uh, it doesn't want to kill anything. It just wants to talk, basically. But it could kill if it wanted to, but it doesn't. It just kind of hangs out and chats you up. Because it's different. But it could. I realize that none of those really make sounds. So that would be like a ramble portion of this video. I hope I didn't butcher this video. I'm really sorry if I'm talking too much. Let's move on. So I have this. Uh, if you don't know, Kingdom Hearts is my all-time, all-time by far, favorite game franchise ever. And this is a piece of wood that my friend burned. Sora and the Kingdom Hearts Hearts do. So it's a one of a kind gift, which means it's very special to me. And it's a one of a kind gift of Kingdom Hearts, so that makes it even more awesome. Because um, Kingdom Hearts is a game that haunts you if you've played it. It's about so many different things. Um, that are really hard to explain if you've never played. A lot of people shied away from the game. Because it had Disney characters in it. And they thought that maybe it was too childish for them. I promise you, there is a great story in that game. It'll make you cry. A lot. A lot. Uh, the Disney characters aren't main characters. They're more like 
and accessories. The main characters are people that were made for the game. There's also Final Fantasy characters in it. Cloud, Sephiroth, Tifa, Yuffie, Leon. Oh, what's his face? The guy with the sword in one arm. That guy. The three little girls. The flying girls. Um. Uh, for Final Fantasy VII fans, uh, your flower girl is in that. You're in Kingdom Hearts one and two. I'm trying to remember if they're in any of the minor games. And there's awesome, you can fight Sephiroth in one and two. Sephiroth! Sephiroth is so hard. <laughs> you can beat the games, and then you have to play for like another four days to get to the level that you need to be to beat Sephiroth, because he's impossible. But it's awesome when you It's scratching. You hear it? music for the game is also exquisite. It's all composed for the game. Orchestral music. Music with lyrics by Dada Mikaru. Passion. Sanctuary. Passion is beautiful. And I also love simple and is a really good line that I like. Oh, it goes like this. Wish I could prove I love you, but does that mean I have to walk on water? When we are older, you'll understand. These were also a birthday present from the same person who got me the shirt. This is Sora in the Nightmare Before Christmas outfit. And this is Roxas, a really tragic character. I'm not going to tell you why. And you have Goofy. There's a part in Kingdom Hearts 2 with Goofy that you just go like that. Like that forever. And then you're like, no, they can't do that. And then they do that. And then you're like, oh. but I'm not going to tell you. So there's Goofy. That is a heartless. There's Goofy again. There's Sora with his keyblade. Donald. Is hilarious in the games. I never liked Donald Duck until I played Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> and then he cracks me up. 
That's Riku. That's the character that all the fangirls want to um, have relations with. And that guy is not even a main character, really. He's This one is one, two, three, four, five, six. shiny. The shiny guy always worries. That's a quote from Star Wars as told by a three-year-old. <laughs> my hair is making my face itch. Um, I honestly don't recognize these. <laughs> I wish I did. I recognize the one with the wings and the one with the cock. The rest don't look familiar to me. That doesn't mean they don't exist, but it, it didn't come with an identification chart either. It just means I don't remember my keyblades. Oblivion was a really cool one. Um, each keyblade had a different power. Not a different power, but a different, um, level associated with it of power. So there is an ultimate keyblade key and, and I think that's the one that you ultima, I think it was called. That's the one that you wanted by the end to fight Sephiroth with, I think. Well, there's the I 
because I've been talking a lot in this and I'm very sorry if you're disappointed I shouldn't have brought so many things that I like like really like out um, tap on the box for you wanted to relax with this one, you know? The Hunger Games roleplay I did was a lot of work and time. So I wanted to take it easy. Hmm. I'll take some out. There's this one. This one. Has texture on the blade. Does that sound good to you? One of my favorite. When you play the game, you have to go back into the levels and replay and replay and replay to get um, items to synthesize um, like mega ethers to make it mega ethers and um, things like that and one of my favorite levels to go back and play over and over was Alice in Wonderland because you could always find those uh, mushroom guys who would always drop the really rare stuff And the level was Hercules, too. Right. This one. But in general, the harder the foe, the more experience points you got. So you didn't get a lot of experience points in the Alice in Wonderland one, but you got some really good ideas. That's what made me think of Alice in Wonderland, because the Queen of Hearts, off with your head. And in there. explain who he is.
strength of character to protect the people that I love. The rest of the characters all have flaws and journeys they have to go through emotionally. And Sora is kind of a steadfast character, which is out of character for me to like. He's so good, inherently good, and determined, and fearless. He just wants to save his friends in the world, and he's very loyal. And there's a scene where a villain says that he will tell him the whereabouts friend if he begs for it. And so Sora, who is really powerful, he's the keyblade wielder. He could destroy that person if he needed to. And I think he does eventually. Um, he bows. He gets down on his knees and his hands and he puts his head on the ground and he begs. And I just, I don't know, I just love him. Because his pride didn't matter to him. Finding his friend did. And, spoiler alert. At the end of the second game, Sora and Riku are trapped in a world of darkness. And they say something to each other, and it's basically he says, Oh, I wish I could remember the exact quote. But it's basically that if they're stuck in the darkness forever, then that's what they'll be, and they'll protect the people in the light from that by being there. Like, if I have to be here, and I have to be the darkness, I will be the darkness, and I'm going to be a safe darkness. Do you know what I mean? I'm probably doing a bad job explaining it because it's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I don't know, it's just a very poignant scene in my opinion. So those are my keyblades, my birthday keyblades. My birthday shirt. I had I had uh, more stuff to show you. I know, you guys have been asking for him. I think he's gonna have to wait, though. Onion Man, and I brought... I talked about this, but I have these. My Sailor Moon album, one of two. Um, but it is too late for me to keep going. So, I'm going to save those. For another day, I think. Oh, but I do want to do one last thing with you. I have a, a fortune cookie left over. And I saved it for us to open together.
You ready to open it together? Learn Chinese. Watermelon. Shi gua? Shi gua? Shi... I don't know. Lucky numbers are 34, 12, 11, 5, 38, and 47. And our fortune is... Great thoughts come from the heart. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes they come from the minds of mad men. Anyway. Cookie, I'm going to crunch in your ear. It's happening. So if you don't like eating sounds, you should probably click off now. Jimmy, that was a sweet one. Sometimes they taste like cardboard. Okay, so I'm sorry that I talked so much in this. It was not my intention to. I just kind of chilled out, you know, and relaxed and talked to you. Uh, you'll see the other things in another video, and hopefully, I will be back with a roleplay for you within a couple days, three or four. Um, I have so many role plays I'm working on, and I have so many role plays that I want to do. Uh, I'm really happy with how well you guys received the Hunger Games one, because it was a lot of work. <laughs> anyway, I will see you guys soon.